I'll use this box. You know, this is a this is a small, you know, this comes off the machine finished. So there's a little bit that starts on this end of the product, right here on the top. And that's called your starter, right? It, it is a, something underneath the machine that's a belt that grabs it and actually then starts the, allows the machine to start to create this textile to the shape. That's the, we use a, uh, like a natural fiber for that one so we can recycle it. And the rest of this can be whatever fiber you want. You can use a recycle. We're using sustainable resourcing, you know, wools from with Walmart Group as a partner. EcoAge is helping us to validate a lot of this, of the platform, so we can be very thoughtful on the, you know, what we're using for the product. But traditional cut and sew, like traditionally, if you were to make something like this, you would buy yardage and you would take that yardage, you would ply it out on a cutting table, you would cut it, and about 25% of that hits the cutting floor. That's not usable, it's not recyclable. And with, with 3D knitting, you know, and really using additive manufacturing in this process, every part of like, every part of that material is going into this. So there's no waste. Uh, there, then, and there's also just a, like a factor of the, the manufacturing process that you can be thoughtful because you now as a brand can actually know the true origin of the textile you're creating because you're creating it from the fiber level. So now, like, what does that do? That gives you an ability to give true transparency. You know, A, where it's being, like, what it's being made out of. You know, you know where it's being made. And then, you know, that's a big thing, too, is, is the, um, you know, location of manufacture, right? It's not being, now you have it distributed because you're just setting files out. You can actually make things closer to where the final product will be delivered to, to that final customer. You think of the carbon print that would save, right? Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Deeper Data Channel Podcast. I'm your host Deepak and with me we have Gareth Gerson. Gareth is a visionary entrepreneur and the CEO of Varian 3D, the leading provider of additively manufactured textiles, uh, AMT system. With a background in the Los Angeles apparel manufacturing industry and a passion for textile innovation, Gareth has revolutionized the field with uh, Varian 3D's patent approved technology platform that creates customized knitwear. In this podcast, we'll explore Gareth's journey, his groundbre- groundbreaking work at Varian 3D, and his dedication to creating a better future through his business ventures. It's a pleasure to have you here today, Gareth, and uh, thank you for accepting my invitation. Hey, Deepak, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Great, great. So, I have a couple of questions and starting with this one. So, uh, first of all, what exactly is this uh, 3D knitting and how does it differ from traditional textile manufacturing methods? So, um, I mean, it's uh, 3D knitting is the ability to actually, it's very similar to 3D printing. I use traditional flatbed knitting machines and what you're able to do is every part of the input, so all the fibers you use, get actually uh, put into the final product. I have some examples to show you kind of what a 3D printed textile looks like using a flatbed knitting machine. Uh, but the, you know, the big unlock was the software. And that's what Varian 3D, uh, that's what Varian 3D created. That's what I've been on kind of a mission for, you know, working on for the last uh, five years now. So okay. Just right. just in, in that, so Deepak, just to give your uh, viewers uh, some idea, uh, this was right. kind of our, as a breakthrough product and this will help kind of contextualize the conversation, what 3D knitting is, what does a 3D printed textile look like? Uh, the and. These are machines that typically make the sweaters we make, we buy and wear. At uh, there are hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of these machines um, distributed globally, manufacturing a lot of the products uh, we buy currently, with uh, some modifications. And what the machine manufacturers are creating right now, uh, and add-ons to these machines, they can make very complex 3D knitted, 3D printed textiles. So this, you recognize this, those of you who. Um, use Blender. This is the Blender monkey head. Uh, this is the um, the file format we use to 3D print it. We're actually able to print the textile and there is near zero waste in how you do this. So this is a covering the final product. We have a proprietary software and the algorithm will determine the most optimal way uh, to produce this 3D printed textile. And this is what it looks like off the machine to give your viewers just an idea. So it comes off the machine finished like this, and you can see the join line here. And the power of our platform is this would take, this could take six months for an engineer today using today's software to try to actually make this. Our software is able to take in this, like an OBJ file or an STL file, and instantly 
produces an STL, um, sorry, it produces a, um, a pre-processed textile file for manufacturing. And then on top of that, you can overlay designs and graphics on this. This is nearly impossible for an engineer to do. So, I mean, these are, this would take uh, thousands of samples to validate it. And we didn't want one, one pass. Wow, wow, that's that's pretty impressive. Actually. And I've seen your I've seen your pitch earlier also, so I'm, I'm totally impressed right now when you actually showed this to me. Yeah, and really I think it's, it's it's a hard thing to, you know, when we talk about it, and I, I have to explain it. If I don't have examples, True. it's always people are like, "Why? Well, I, I don't understand. Well, what is it? What is what? What do you mean, three D print textiles? Is it is it is it is it like a, a real fabric, or is it like added to manufacturing? You know, they're making kind of textiles using." 3D printers, but it's that kind of pliable. Uh, it's it's not a it's not a textile as we know it. This is this is the fabrics that we sit in in our chairs and our cars with the clothing we wear, the shoes we wear. It's literally when you think about textiles, they are everywhere around us. It's almost in some ways it's like air, right? It's like literally all part of our life in so many different ways. But it the way we make them right now and manufacture them, it's totally unsustainable. It's terrible for the environment. You know, it, it's it you know and that was that's that's what we're solving for. Right. Great, great. Totally impressive, actually. <laughs> so how did you come up with this idea of using this 3D knitting and to create sustainable textiles? And like, what sets Variant 3D <clears throat> apart from other textile manufacturers? Well, like, so the where where it started was, so I've been in the fashion and textile business for over 15 years. Had a couple of very successful contemporary brands. Uh, had a textile company for uh, our family business, which was a big hospitality company. So we covered furniture and umbrellas and did all those things. And I watched a uh, documentary called The True Cost, so EcoAge helped uh, like put that together. And you know, it's like one of those moments in your life where it's kind of there's a, a very pivotal moment. And I watched that documentary, and you know, Andrew Morgan did it, and it it you know it really shined a light on I was part of the problem, and I'd always I'd always prided myself in being very like conscientious and thoughtful, both environmentally, socially, how I made the products or how I make products, and it it actually it it created like it was such a bright light on wow I am actually part of the problem and I need to figure out a different way to you know make products more sustainably so I sold my companies took the money and went on a journey and tried to figure out is there a way to actually is there a method to make where you can actually three D print or use something like three D printing to um, create products on demand just in time fully customizable can I source the fibers and be very thoughtful about those fibers so I can tell it, you know, true, you know, circular story of beginning to end on how that, where that, where, where the product starts and how it ends its life. And I, and that led me to 3D knitting. And so I, my mentor of mine, I found, uh, he invented the fly knit shoe for Nike. He's done a bunch of interesting things in aerospace and automotive. And, you know, I bought a machine, bought the software, spent a better part of a year and a half learning how to program and then realized well, if I ever wanted to be efficient at this, I'd have, probably have to dedicate the next 30 plus years of my life. And I just thought, well, that's not that's not sustainable. So let me try to create a software program that I could use internally. And that's that was the gestation, the beginning of Variant 3D. And then as it grew and the patents I wrote over over that period of time, it, which we've been all that all have been granted now, and we're, we have more around the space. But it it is it literally it is a cloud based software program that allows users to use their phone. So you can use your your phone, you can use your iPad, you can use your laptop and you have access to this currently. You can't, right? You need a tower, a, a, a software key or some some uh, machine manufacturers make you buy a whole software like tower set, you know, so it's a very closed loop system. And you're, you know, you're, you're stuck at your desk where you, I sometimes find it hard to draw inspiration. I need to be outside. I need to be, you know, I want to be in a museum and I want to be able to design on the fly. So that's why I made it cloud-based. And so what sets us apart is you design in 2D in the traditional bitmap program, you know, where you can design pixel by pixel as a traditional engineer, but you can also design in 3D. And it's this, and that has been the biggest hurdle that everyone thought was impossible to do where you can, you can act. So what would take like, a, like this monkey head or like these, I mean, these are just different things like products, right? that these, this comes off the machine like this. There's no sewing. You know, it, it comes off. But to do this takes, you know, could take, you know, a month or so of engineering time to figure this out. And you need to have 30 years of experience. What we're doing now is just taking a scan. I can scan my water bottle 
I can upload that in our server and instantly uh, process a program. So six months of engineering time is done in like instantaneously. And that like it's a software that is democratizing this industry. It's a software that's going to create access. What's exciting about it is over the last, you look at papers over the last 10 years, everyone's touted this as the future of textile manufacturing and how we'll make our textiles. Not all of them, but a big, a, a large majority of them. But it's always been the software and the programming and the knowledge that's kind of been the barrier to entry. Impressive, impressive. And I really like the idea where you actually made everything as a cloud based rather than just a desktop solution, actually. So, yes, which, which, which is very helpful for anyone to actually kind of use it. And, you know, and, and uh, Deepak, like that, that it's a big, not everyone can afford these tools. Not everyone can afford, I had to invest, uh, you know, about half a million dollars in a facility and a machine and an office. And <clears throat> not everyone has that. Like, and I thought, well, if, if we really want to affect change, not only in brands, but in like in, in young designers who want to have access to this, you have to make it accessible on your everyday tools. So your phone actually becomes the scanning device to scan in the fiber, not to apply as a texture, but actually goes in and we've done it at the granular level where it actually makes up the textile. So the you'll actually see the grin through the flyaway, the, the loft of that fiber and how it reacts. And that's like, that's such an important thing. So you can truly create in a real true 3D environment. And then the other thing, we you know, like similar to Figma, we've modeled our platform like Figma or Flux or like Google Sheets, right? Or Google, like, uh, like yeah, Google Sheets. All of us, so every stakeholder from your engineer, material science, engineer, designer, uh, creative director, I mean, everyone who is responsible for that can all collaboratively design in one environment which drives completion of that product faster. And you do it all digitally. You're not making samples. You're not making, you're making maybe one instead of a hundred to validate the program or the product. Yeah, so that's, that's totally, I, I really, I really like this part actually. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so there are a lot of stuff which is actually, actually happening in Vidin 3D. So like, could you talk about the digital twin loop design software and like, how it's actually enabling and customizing the sustainable textiles with zero net waste. So that's 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 what I want to really understand, like how it's actually kind of producing with zero net waste, basically. So so everything like I'll use I'll use this box. You know, this is a this is a small. You know, this comes off the machine finished. So there's a little bit that starts on this end of the product, right here on the top. And that's called your starter. Right, it, it is a, something underneath the machine that's a belt that grabs it and actually then starts the allows the machine to start to create this textile to the shape. That's the, we use a uh, like a natural fiber for that one, so we can recycle it. And the rest of this can be whatever fiber you want. We can use a recycle. But we're using sustainable. We're sourcing you know wools from with Walmart Group as a partner. EcoAge is helping us to validate a lot of this of the platform, so we can be very thoughtful on. The, you know, what we're using for the product, but traditional cut and sew, like traditionally, if you were to make something like this, you would buy yardage and you would take that yardage, you would ply it out on a cutting table, you would cut it and about 25% of that hits cutting floor. That's not usable. It's not recyclable. And with, with 3d knitting, you know, and really using additive manufacturing in this process, every part of like every part of that material is going into this. So there's no waste. And uh, then, and there's also just a, f like a factor of the, the manufacturing process that you can be thoughtful because you now as a brand can actually know the true origin of the textile you're creating because you're creating it from the fiber level. So now like, what does that do? That gives you a bit an ability to give true transparency. You know, a where it's being like, what it's being made out of, you know, you can know where it's being made. And then, you know, that's a big thing too, is, is the, um, you know, location of manufacture right it's not being now you have a distributed because you're just sending files out you can actually make things closer to where the final product will be delivered to to that final customer you think of the carbon makes, print that would save right 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 correct, correct makes a lot of sense actually and i could see it's it's more like a simulation of an algorithm actually i would i would think like it's it's the way you have actually described that particular 3d knitting with that particular material. So I, I feel it's like, okay, it's, it's a backend algorithm which is actually designed for it. 
Yes. Which is really, really great, actually. And, you know, and, and Deepak, like we're, you know, we're, you know, we're currently raising money and uh, we're doing it so we can hyper, hyper accelerate uh, the development of this. A big part of what we did for the last, um, you know, three years, once we've got, had kind of, we, we validated a breakthrough and then, and then we broke it a couple of times. And then over the last year and a half, we've made exponential, like real exponential growth in what we're doing. But now all the patents have been filed. Now we own all the patents we're filing. Uh, we've got a priority patent filing for all our international patents, which is going out. But, you know, what? this isn't like some far off future. This is, we're talking uh, first quarter, first uh, end of first quarter next year, 24, the whole end to end platform will be done. So that's like, and we have an incredible team of engineers. And I, I mean, we really, I mean, we have a small team, but they're really bright. Great, great. That's, that's totally great. So, um, how do you see the future of textile industry evolving around these kind of adoption of 3D knitting? And like, how does Variant 3D continue to innovate in this space? So, I, I mean, the future of textiles is, you know, if you Google 3D knitting, you'll see every article from apparel to footwear to automotive to aerospace. Uh, it is, it's, it's one of the most exciting ways to truly, to, to like shepherd in additive manufacturing as a method to make for uh, for the textile industry. Uh, this, you know, I mean, there, there are things that we're, we've, we've created now. So we've got uh, machine learning as part of our platform to create a repository of all the knit knowledge. So what's exciting too is as people, you know, create on the platform, it learns and it learns what the most efficient way is to actually make these products and then creates a repository which doesn't exist right now that everyone can have access to to design more efficiently. So make things faster, uh, design things that are more out, like that are outside the box. I mean, What's interesting is I think we've only, we're only servicing the markets that currently are like that are you know being a, that are being designed within you know this kind of three D knitting three D printing textile space. There are things that are coming out of MIT which are mind blowing with structural engineering, uh, looking at caissons and, and art and it's like I mean I I think this I, what I'm excited about is not what we we'll be able to absolutely service everyone that's currently working in this space. I'm excited to see the innovation that comes from this. And because now people can now take months or years and hundreds of thousands of dollars of uh, development cost out of the equation and have things at the tip of their fingers, I'm excited to see what people are really going to create using our platform. So I think this is going to, this will touch everything. This will touch automotive. I mean, we've, we're in conversations with a lot of automakers right now. Uh, this is a st- sustainable way to create uh, different components within the automotive industry, in farming, in art. There's a great project we're working on with a giant, uh, you know, art structure, a very three-dimensional interactive art structure. There are things that you can do with this because and this is one. This is also one differentiation with uh, Variant 3D in our platform and in, in the Loop platform is it's actually a double bed knit, and that means there's actually two two beds or two plies of knit that are knit together. And what's important about that is a, it's more durable. It's what's used in the footwear industry, but also in smart the whole smart textile industry. So that uh, means you can embed and inlay conductive fibers, microprocessing chips. I mean, there are, we just brought on an engineer uh, that their sole focus is, and that I believe is the future, right? Is the clothes you wear, the shoes you wear, your headphones, your the seat you sit in. Like all of this will be giving feedback to a, a data source. So it's more than just my, you know, my Apple Watch or my Aura Ring or, you know, It'll, there'll be more, there'll be more sensors that will be able to sense the environment around it uh, using these, like these textiles that we're familiar with. Right, right. So this, this does disrupt the entire course of, I would say, the supply chain of this entire structure, basically. It, yeah, it, so. it, it totally does. And, and I have to say, what I'm so excited about is this is, this is the biggest innovation in the textile industry. This is one of the biggest innovations within the textile industry. And I'm excited. We're just finally starting to come out and talk about it publicly. Great, great. So uh, in this regard, like, could you share some of the success stories where companies or brands are actually utilizing this variant 3D technology to improve their production? If it's no, not so confidential. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's some like in footwear that I can't talk about. We have NDAs and in, in the automotive right. industry and in, in, in medical. But I can tell you, so uh, Pierre Cardin, well, that was one of our early on first test projects. So I got to go out to Paris, meet Pierre, like do the whole, we did a whole presentation for a whole collection from knitted suits to sweaters, to gar- I mean, you name it. We did the whole thing from end to end in one week. And if you know, putting together a collection, a finished collection in that time span, 
is impossible, right? It's, it takes months and then there's curating and I mean, and then there's you drop style. So we're able to do the whole thing in a week's time and, and uh, we have pieces of it still here. A lot of it's still in Paris. Uh, so that, that's one in, in fashion we've done. Uh, we did a NFT project with NBC Universal uh, where we embedded uh, NFC chips. That, so it was the, the actual physical sample of the digital, uh, the digital NFT. Uh, that was a huge success. We did it for their, their Monsters collection. Uh, we worked on a project with Ashley Furniture uh, that was in, incredible. Uh, I can't talk much more about it, but it's what they're doing. What what they're doing in in pushing like into the future of textiles and furniture. It, it's really it's it's interesting to be. It, I love the fact that sustainability and innovation is the top of their list, and we were we were able to help actually actualize that into a product that they will hopefully be launching uh, in the next uh, next year or so. And um, I mean, we're working on all kinds of footwear projects. For some really interesting uh, designers, uh, there's a uh, cycling shoe that we're creating. And the thing about footwear is, you actually have to pack in a multitude of different textiles or knit structures into one small upper, and we're able to take. So you're able to take a scan of your foot, and we can create a, a an actual custom uh, textile upper to support that. Right, right. So I, I think like this is actually kind of a integration also with different platforms so going forward. Like, okay, we have a virtual thing which we need to actually create and we have the skeleton or the internal part. So with that, like after scanning, we definitely can actually come up with some recommendations for the customers. So yeah, I, I can actually foresee a lot of innovations that can happen with this space actually. I mean, what's so exciting, Deepak, is like that you before, you don't have to have a background or knowledge in textile engineering or 3D knitting to be able to actually create something to cover, you know, you know, something that you printed, 3D printed. It's just, it just opened up. It's just, it's what's opening up. It's a more CAD friendly, CAD user friendly platform for younger users to be able to intuitively work in it. But also like the, the learning part is really interesting is because you're working in this 3D space. It also shows it to you in the traditional 2D space, and through that and making it, and then collaboratively working with other other users, and you don't have to be in the same place. Like you can be, you know, where you are. I can be here, and I can have another engineer in Costa Rica, and we can all come in into this into our platform setting, and we can all design together. I mean, think about what that does in accessibility knowledge. True, 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 true. That that's that's actually the key, basically, behind this. Behind yes. That stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So uh, yeah, so in this in this regard, like uh, how how is that adoption and acceptance of three D knitting actually like looking like when you kind of pitching it to the people and like how they are kind of perceiving this actually? So I mean, we we we, we built what the industries wanted for. I mean, this is it's like it's something that the industry. I I you know I actually built this as a tool for myself, and then I knew I I I and and what, that's why we made it like the UN UX would be super intuitive. Um, and it primarily because I, I don't want to remove Barry's entry, but I mean, it is, it's probably been the easiest thing I've ever had to sell. I mean, my, my pitches go as, you know, we're, when we're talking with larger brands and companies now, because we need to build out the infrastructure and the partnerships, uh, by, you know, middle of next year, we'll open this up to the general public. We're working with students, uh, at local universities, uh, and we're bringing in interns to leverage and use the platform. I mean, we have a junior network engineer who has, you know, she had come from an amazing university, but has only had about six months of programming time. And the things that she's able to make now using our software, you know, it just, it would have taken her maybe 10 or 12 years of, in, I, and this is not knowledge. You have to actually go find an internship or you have to, you have to go work for a large company and, and hopefully gain that knowledge, right? So we're creating that type of accessibility. This, uh, you know, for designers, you know, there's nothing like as a designer, there's nothing worse than you create a whole design pack. Like I, I could create, I could, I could give this to a, you know, a, you know, an engineer and they would more or less probably say it's not possible. Right. Or they would tell me if I figured out their billable hours for this, I would say, well, I don't want to do it because I, how am I ever going to sell it and amortize that cost? I've, I can now remove that. I can remove that big barrier and, you know, and then, and then 
create the access. So now these engineers can share with designers or designers can actually make things and see how it's being made. And, and then what I'd like it to be and what we're, we're, our goal is, is that it'll be as you do it, you understand. And as you understand, you kind of teach yourself. Right, right. So as a brand, actually, like how does Variant 3D plan to expand its reach and impact in the global industry? And like, what are some of the steps which is taking for long term sustainability and even scalability in, the, in terms of business? So uh, we're partnering with uh, factories right now because uh, a big part is is leveraging uh, the uh, already um, the infrastructure that already exists. So having them accept a, the file format set that we have. Uh, we're building a, a platform that they can create. It's easily accessible for them to download these files. And then uh, we've got, I mean, we've got brands. We're targeting brands that are currently working in the space who understand the difficulties of it, who understand the value proposition. So from, all, you can you can name a large footwear brand and we're talking to them. Uh, they're, they're leveraging uh, the platform and we're building out components of it for their specific use case. Uh, for small designers, we just launched it. Actually, we just... <coughs> launch the beta internally to validate this. So for a des- like for fashion designers, uh, they'll be able to upload a, um, uh, a pattern file. So they can upload a pattern file, instantly creates a 3D model, and then it instantly flans it into a, a pre-processed textile file. And then they're able to design on that. So I've, <clears throat> we've eliminated a lot of this. Uh, we've, we're eliminating these barriers as we're kind of going through, we're finding out what people want. And then our biggest, I think our biggest uh, parlay into market saturation will be into fashion. I mean, this is, if you can see, this is a, I wore this today. We 3D printed this vest. You can see it's a, you know, Kooji design. And, you know, and it's like these, this type of design is, I mean, forget about it. If you've never played in, in like the knitwear arena, being able to design that. But these are things that you can drag and drop in place and design not only in like color and graphic, but also in mixing different types of like knit structures and textile structures. I hope I, I think I answered your question. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. And you can also, so go, on, you can also go on our website too, right? That's a, there, right. We're, we're fielding inquiries. I get a lot from LinkedIn, uh, but we're fielding inquiries. And as we launch different parts of it, we're we're making it accessible um we have a lab so we're based in los angeles so we've got actual so and we're based in la but outside kind of in the country and we're in a four thousand square foot uh, horse barn that we converted into a technical textile lab we run the internet off starlink you know eventually by end of year we'll run this thing uh, off of renewables but it's it was, it's, it's a compelling if anyone is ever out here and wants to visit, they can see it. We have a whole little micro factory out here. So we can we can also produce things and make rapid sampling and things like that. Things that at the moment aren't always accessible. If you have a machine and you if you have your own machine, we can send you the file you can make yourself. Right, right, right. So my last question, actually. So how do you envision the intersection of technology and sustainability evolving in the future? And what role does uh, Variant 3D actually like? providing in shaping the future. So I'm I, the, the, the interse- intersection of sustainability and technology, I think go hand in hand there. I think technology is going to empower like a more sustainable way to make things. I think had we, had I tried to start this company 10 years ago, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to leverage the tool sets that are out there now to help us solve for the problem, like to actually create the algorithms to solve for this. The machines aren't, weren't quite there. You know, there, it was just a perfect storm. It's kind of the perfect storm of, you know, fiber, you know, fiber development and engineering has come up along with machine manufacturers, right? And building these machines. And then I was able to bring in an overlay of a, of a software platform or a software platform that's machine agnostic to kind of take the, the monotonous, like laborious part of programming and automate it. Um, I mean, I'm excited. I think well, I always, I, I used to plan every, every like sprint that we did in five years, right? Okay. In five years, this is going to be, I mean, at the moment it, it is exponentially, you know, there's exponential like growth in every sector. And I, I feel like a year today is five years. What, you know, what, you know, five years ago, it's like a year today is like, it's just, it's like, there's so much happening. I mean, you look at like chat GPT and leveraging AI how we're integrating that into our platform and how that is hyper accelerating not only our development 
but also the tools that we can offer people. You know, the other thing about technology, which is exciting, is in the project we did with uh, NBC Universal with that NFT project. So we can actually, we can put all this on the blockchain and we have total transparency. You as before, if you ever try to validate, okay, where did this t-shirt come from? You have to look at, you look at the hang tag, you go to the RA number, you never find out. I mean, this, I really can't, in true, like, honestly, couldn't tell you where every, if this is truly a sustainable product, right? Because then you have to think, I, I cut and sewed probably a thousand of these to sell a hundred because I had to hit my minimums. But the natural byproduct of what we're doing is you only print what you need when you need it. You print what you want. And you can also, there's a part of our platform where we have in our roadmap that allows for co-collaboration. And I think these are all things that we have always wanted that can never leverage. And technology is now like that, that, that kind of exponential technology growth has allowed us to do that. So if you co-design something with a brand, you're more likely to keep it for longer. And if I'm only making it, but I'm making it epoch to your size, so I'm not I'm not putting you into a category, right? Uh, there's all this like uh, made, to, made to measure, like this is, it's just a, a, a broader breakdown of a size range of a size, small, medium, large, extra large. But I actually can make something. So we actually can take your body scan. I can segment it. I can make something specifically for you. And I, and what we're working on is I can actually make it perform to the way that you want it through a, a, a you know, quantity of questions that you give us, right? Just like Dolly or anything like that. You tell me what you wanted to do, and then we will we will be able to output a textile that'll perform that way. I mean, it's like there, yeah. It's it's it, and everyone who's like, well, I'm not sure. Can you really do that? Is it a bit of is it a bit of BS? I go, yeah. I'll just send me the file. We'll show you. I'll show you in real life. I'll show you in real time. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. So yeah, so that covered all my questions, Garrett. And thank you so much for explaining this entire stuff. And I really regret I should have kept a disclaimer telling, please tune the video part of Spotify uh, <laughs> before <yeah>. opening. <laughs> I know it'll be hard. But good that I think the video. Correct. So if you if you're listening to this on Spotify, you should definitely turn the video on because I think exactly it'll help contextualize. It'll help contextualize what a 3D printed textile is. <laughs>